Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Sandy and I'm a VMware Technical Partner Manager and Systems Engineer. In this session I'm going to be talking to you and giving you an overview of our new version of Virtual SAN or vSAN and which is now 6.5. Now in case you're not aware, Virtual SAN is actually baked into our hypervisor, our vSphere hypervisor and last week we launched at VMworld Barcelona 2016 we announced our vSphere 6.5 version. So in conjunction with our vSphere 6.5, we also have announced our Virtual SAN 6.5 because it is baked into the hypervisor. So I'm going to be providing an overview of the new as well as updated feature sets related to vSphere and or rather Virtual SAN 6.5. So without further ado, let's get started. We can break down what's new in vSAN 6.5 into three main categories. The first is we've made it possible to accelerate the responsiveness of business with vSAN 6.5. The second is we have lowered your total cost of ownership or TCO by up to 50%. And third is that we're enabling you to scale to tomorrow, basically tomorrow's technologies, tomorrow's business. So we are future proofing virtual SAN for you. So let's take a quick look at each one of these. Starting off with the TCO savings, we can do this with our new iSCSI support for vSAN 6.5. This allows you to use vSAN Data Store as an iSCSI target for your physical servers such as, say, a Microsoft clustering service. The benefit is that it's going to eliminate the cost and complexity of a separate physical array by using vSAN for physical, non-virtualized, and multi-hypervisor workloads. It also helps expand business critical app use cases. With supported Windows Server Failover Clustering, or WSFC, which has essentially replaced the traditional Microsoft Clustering Service, or MSCS, with shared storage. To summarize the iSCSI support, non virtualized workloads and apps like SQL using failover clustering can utilize vSAN for storage using iSCSI initiators. You can export VMDKs as storage or LUNs for iSCSI targets managed through policies. Core vSAN functionality is available to include dedupe, compression, and space efficiency feature sets. And it is still managed through the vCenter server just as normal, so there's no new tools that you have to learn how to use. So again, making it very easy to administer. Also helping with your overall TCO or total cost of ownership is the three C's that vSAN 6.5 brings. And the first one is cost. This allows customers with old slow switching such as 100 megabit connections to use 10 gigabit for vMotion and vSAN using a pair of low cost CAT6 or twin AX cables. The second C is complexity. There's no need to route the vSAN storage network over the WAN, which reduces the need for multicast configurations and VLANs for vMotion and vSAN. And the third C is compliance. Large enterprises that have concerns about exposing storage networks, even over an encrypted VPN or private MPLS connection, no longer have that concern anymore. So by separating out the witness traffic from the vSAN data traffic, this reduces the footprint for remotely accessing data. Note this function can be used even without using crossover cables. With vSAN 6.5's new Power CLI commandlets, business and IT can respond faster than ever before. The full featured commandlets and REST API allow you to fully automate your administrative tasks, saving you time. The enterprise class automation brings cloud management flexibility to storage by supporting the common REST APIs. So the primary benefit is that it accelerates the infrastructure responsiveness and SLAs with a full, fully scalable, automated, and simplified operational management. Beyond our existing API user interface and CLI options, Power CLI supports is being updated in this release and the following are planned to be supported in this release. vSAN cluster settings, vSAN disk and disk group, fault domain and stretch cluster for robo, host maintenance and cluster shutdown, health check for vSAN cluster, health issue remediation, resyncing components, capacity reporting, and proactive test end results. vSAN will continue integrating with the latest enhancements in hardware for drives, memory, controllers, and servers. 
Also, vSAN is taking advantage of the latest hardware innovations in next gen and VRAM and VDIM, etc. 512E drives will allow support for 1.8 terabyte 10K RPM drives for hybrid SAN configurations. The storage industry is hitting a capacity limit using the 512N sector size used currently in rotating storage media. So to address this issue, the storage industry has proposed a new advanced format drive which uses the 4K native sector size. These AF drives allow disk drive vendors to build high capacity drives, provide better performance, efficient space utilization, and above all, improve reliability and error correction capability. Large capacity SSDs mainly leverage 512N, which remains to be fully supported. And one uh, kind of side note is be sure to refer to the vSAN compatibility guide to verify that the latest supported drives are truly supported for vSAN. The link uh, to the lower right hand corner of this slide is there for the vSAN compatibility guide. The goal of vSAN is to be the best platform for flash storage and to help customers accelerate their adoption of flash. To that end, we are cascading the all flash hardware support down to our vSAN standard edition, which means all versions of vSAN standard, advanced, and enterprise will now fully support all flash hardware configurations at no extra charge. An important note, however, though, is that the all flash space efficiency features such as dedupe compression and erasure coding are available in the vSAN Advanced and Enterprise Editions only. So although you can use the all flash in the standard now, it does not allow you to enable the dedupe compression and erasure coding. So keep that in mind as far as the standard. And of course, uh, for anybody really looking to have that all flash vSAN, we generally recommend that customers do use the vSAN Advanced or Enterprise as best practice so they can enable those dedupe compression erasure coding feature sets. The customer will see tremendous savings up to 40% by having the vSAN Advanced or Enterprise space efficiency features, which typically makes up for the slightly higher license cost in the Advanced. And then for Robo customers, we've introduced a vSAN Advanced for Robo licensing pack. This will be similar to the 25VM pack available today, which is priced per VM and not per CPU. But it will be based on vSAN Advanced, providing these customers with the space efficiency features to again help further lower their hardware costs. With VMware, you have three options for deploying and managing containers and cloud native apps. In all of them, vSAN is the default storage platform. The first two are brownfield use cases, such as an existing vSphere environment. The first is off-the-shelf vSphere where nothing else is required. We already offer Docker volume driver support and can use VMs as your Docker nodes. Docker, Docker Swarm, and other cluster managers all work out of the box because of our recent work on the API. It's ideal if you want to do some testing and development work with containers especially. If you want containers to run in your production environment, then vSphere Integrated Containers, or VIC, is the way to go. It allows you to run VM-like isolation for containers, where your new and traditional apps can coexist on the same platform. The same management stack is used and coexist while using your DevOps and traditional IT tools. And finally, the Photon platform is a platform to run native containers on a slim ESX hypervisor variant. It's a trusted hypervisor with a new operational model to include for storage. A new version of vSAN will be available as part of the Photon platform. It will remove the vSAN dependency on the vCenter server so that it can be managed and monitored completely through APIs like Photon. The infrastructure is only one part of this scalable management quest, of course. The other is application lifecycle management. So how do you provision your apps and their storage? How do you adapt to changing requirements and monitor the QoS or quality of service per app and then react to these types of issues? Today, policy-based automation has completely revolutionized how customers manage their application. There's no need for manual LUN provisioning and management. The admin specifies in terms of descriptive policies, what they need for their apps, and then how to do it.
The platform vSAN, for example, automatically enforces the policies and then monitors and performs automatic remediation when needed. We also have a new version of Virtual Volumes, which is version 2.0. It offers greater enterprise-grade availability with native array-based replication. Finer grain control with flexible consistency group membership and with multiple targets. It has easier policy management between vSAN and the arrays, as well as offer more critical app use cases to include support for Oracle Rack. And lastly, if you're interested in taking part of the vSAN betas, go out to http colon slash slash www.vmware.com slash go then virtual dash san dash beta. So that completes this session on what's new with Virtual SAN 6.5. I hope you got some value out of this information that I've provided on the new and enhanced feature sets of Virtual SAN 6.5. If you'd like to continue to watch some of my other enablement sessions, such as the ones I will be doing for the vSphere 6.5 updates as well, uh, feel free to go out to my YouTube channel. As you see here on this slide, I have the links to my YouTube channel my Twitter account, my webpage, as well as my LinkedIn account. So feel free to go out and to visit any one of those links and subscribe if you'd like and to be updated with any updated content that I've posted out to my website or YouTube channel. So feel free to go out to those links and use them as you will. Uh, there's a lot of great information out there, both sales and technical, a little bit more on the technical side, but I do invite you to go ahead and do that. So I look forward to you joining me again in other sessions and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.